Welcome back to the virtual classroom of Kembe School of Chemistry. Sound clear? Right, let's continue the uh, discussion on uh, study back 1.2, which is um, concept of moles, molar volume of chem and chemical formula. In fact, in the previous uh, lesson, we completed the concept of moles and molar volume, and we started on the uh, calculation of the uh, formula, I think, yes, com uh, the amount of substances and chemical formulae. A calculation of formula using uh, an uh, using chemical um, experiments. Early, we studied how to find the formula using uh, uh, by crossing the valencies. I remember discussing the question one to six. Am I right? I think we had to continue from question seven. Correct. Here from uh, question seven, this is to find the percentage composition of each element in the following compound. We're just going to do one example. And as I mentioned last week, you have to practice uh, the remaining questions. Uh, let me take question um, uh, this one, the copper sulfate pentahydrate. I'm just going just to do it next to the question itself. Uh, to find the percentage composition of each element, the first step would be to find the uh, formula weight of this entire molecule. Copper is 63.5 and sulfate is 32.1. You have to use exact values. Uh, don't round it up to 32. And oxygen is uh, 16 uh, times 4 plus 5 times water. 2 plus 16. Uh, so you get the uh, formula weight of copper sulfate pentahydrate, which is, let me add, 64 uh, plus 18 times 5. It's 250.6. This is the formula weight of copper sulfate a pentahydrate, right? So to find the percentage of copper, what you can do is uh, you can find the mass of copper, which is 63.5. I'm going to do it on the next page. So this is copper sulfate pentahydrate, which is 250.6. Uh, and to find the percentage composition of copper, you take the mass of copper, which is 63.5. It's only one copper divided by the molar mass of the entire molecule into 100%. Can, can someone get me the answer for this? Likewise, percentage composition of the uh, element sulfur, which is 32.1 over 250.6 into 100%. Someone will call the second one. Percentage of oxygen. Now, when it comes to oxygen, it's not just 16. You can see there are how many oxygens in one molecule of copper sulfate pentahydrate? There are nine oxygens, right? Uh, four oxygens in copper sulfate, and you have five oxygens in water. Four in copper sulfate, right? Five in water in total. You got nine oxygen atoms, so it's 16 times nine divided by the molar mass of copper sulfate into 100%. Can someone give me the answers for this? And then at last, the uh, hydrogen. Percentage composition of hydrogen, which is hydrogen. There are 10 hydrogen atoms. There are 10 hydrogen atoms here. So 10 divided by 250.6 into 100%, you get the uh, percentage of the hydrogen. So when you add all these answers, right, if you can work out the answers, it will be almost uh, close to 100%. Sometimes you may, you may not get exactly 100%. Uh, because you round, round up to two decimal places, but each percentage should be given to two decimal places. Right? Okay, All right. Uh, please copy this. If you have any questions, let me know. And please work out the percentages. Uh, this is the question number seven of study pack uh, 1.2. The last bit on the chemical formula. So this is how you find the percentage of uh, each element in the compound. Please copy this. And we'll try uh, the iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate. Uh, I think it's hepta or decahydrate. Let me check on that. Uh, this is, uh, you can try this, yes. You can try this question after completing this iron 2 sulfate uh, hepta hydrate question. Yeah, get me the percentages of each.
me know once you're done. So next is FeSO4 heptahydrate. So iron, you should take the exact value 55.8. 55.8 sulfur is 32.1 and uh, you can check the periodic table which i gave on the study pack 1.1 on the last page and this is 16 times 4 and 7 uh, 2 ta uh, 7 times 2 plus 16. so this is uh let's check the oh, what's the total value 32.1 64 plus 18 times 7 you get 277.9, correct? The percentage composition of iron, iron is 55.8, only one iron, so 277.9, out of 277.9, iron is 55.8. If we can find the percentage, This is uh, two decimal places, 20.08%. Uh, and likewise, percentage composition of sulfur, 32.1 over 277.9, 200%. Let's check the answer. Eleven point five five percent percentage of oxygen. Now there are uh, not four oxygens, eleven oxygens, right? Four plus seven is eleven. Uh, so sixteen times eleven over two hundred seventy-seven point nine into hundred percent. So sixteen times eleven uh, divided by two hundred seventy-seven point nine into hundred. You get 63.33 percent then at last you got this hydrogen there are 14 hydrogens there are 14 hydrogen percentage of hydrogen uh, 14 hydrogens 14 times 1 14. so this 14 into 1000 divided by 277.9 you get fifth uh, 14 hydrogens is yes. 14 into 100 divided by 277.9 you get 5.04 percent right so if you add all these uh, you should get a value which is close to 100 sometimes you might not get exactly 100 because you're rounding out to two decimal places And in this case, of course, you get exactly 100%. So this is how you find the percentage composition of each element in a compound, right? So you can find one element or you can find all the elements, percentage of all the elements, right? Clear? Any questions here? You can practice the rest of the questions later on. As I mentioned before, I'll be just doing one question and let you do one in the class and then you can uh, practice the remaining questions later on. Right, but you must do all the questions, right? So later on, we'll see uh, how this percentage uh, composition get uh, it's more useful in calculations. Right, so let's move on to the next question. So practice the rest of the questions later on, right? Question number eight, uh, find the empirical formula. As I mentioned last week, the empirical formula is a formula showing the simplest ratio of elements in a compound. In fact, the molecular formula is a whole number multiple of empirical formula, and we discussed about it in the previous lesson, right? So the empirical formula of the uh, following compound, it says uh, 5.60, uh, uh, grams of iron. I just do uh, C as example. 5.60 grams of iron from 16.25 grams of iron chloride. Now the thing is, uh, as I mentioned last week, 
you need to uh, work out the uh, individual masses, individual masses, right? So you have iron 5.60 and you've got the chlorine, which is uh, iron and chlorine together is 16.25. So the chlorine is 16.25 minus 5.60, right? Because iron and chlorine together is 5.60, I mean 16.25 and iron alone is uh, 5.60. So 16.25 minus 5.60 will be 10.65. So get the individual masses. Right, that's the first step. Because I mentioned last week, uh, if you need to find the, uh, what do you call the, um, uh, the mol molar mass or the empirical formula, a molecular formula or the empirical formula, the first step would be to work out the individual masses uh, of a given mass of a compound, right? And then you find the moles, you divide the mass by the molar mass, get the moles, and then you work out the simplest ratio. Simplest ratio can be found by dividing the moles by the smallest number. 5.8, this is 5.60 divided by 55.8 is 0.1. And you, you have 10.65 divided by 35.5.3. So here, uh, the smallest value is 0.1. So get one is to three ratio, so FeCl3, iron free chloride. That is the smallest or the simplest ratio, one is to three, right? You can copy this on the next page under the answers. I had done the C part, and I'm sure you can try the rest of it. Just do a B now. After copying this, try B. Let me know once you're done. Uh, what's the answer for the phosphorus oxide? Yes. First, you write the masses. 0.62 oxygen is 1.10. Um, 1.10 uh, 1 minus uh, 0 0.62 is 0.48. So the moles 0 0.62 divided by 31. 0.48 divided by 16. So this is. Uh, 0.62 divided by 31 is 0 0.002 and 0.48 divided by 16 is 0 0.003, right? Now, the simplest ratio, the thing is, this is uh, P, uh, you can't round up to 0 0.03 to 0 0.04, right? 
So what you can do is divide both by the smallest value. Right? Then you get 1 is to 1.5, right? 1 is to 1.5. Then you can't round up 1.5 to 2. Right? You have you can't do that unless it is 1.9. 1.9 you can do it round it up to 2. In this calculation, you can't do that. You have to multiply this by a value till you get a whole number. So you can multiply by 2. You get 2 is to 3. So P203 is the answer. Right? Because 1.5, if it's 1.1, you can make it 1. 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, up to 1.9, you can't round it up. You have to multiply by a number till you get a whole number. Say, for example, you get, say, uh, 2 is to 1.3, right? So you can't make it 1.3, 1.5, and then multiply by 2. No, you have to multiply the whole thing by 3. You get uh, 6 is to 9, uh, sorry, 1.9, which, uh, which is 2. Right, so that is how you should do. Oh, sorry, 1.3 times 3 is how much? 3.9, right? Yes, 3.9. So 1.3 times 3 is 3.9. So we can make it as 4. We can take it as take it as 4, right? So you have to multiply by a number till you get a whole number, right? You can't just simply round it up. Got it? All right. So this is uh, I had done one, and you did one. Remaining one, you can practice at home. I hope all of you got this answer.